Welcome back, everybody. We have a very brilliant and interesting guest on set now, Bruce Eichner. Uh, you're with the continuing company. You're not just with them. You're the CEO of the continuing company. And you're the brains behind some really fascinating and innovative buildings across the country, the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, several here in New York City, uh, the Continuum in South Beach. And it's amazing how you think of changing things when you construct a building. Where, where do you start? What's usually the aha moment where you say, let's do this? Well, I think you start, hopefully, when there's an imbalance between supply and demand. Okay, but you got to find that imbalance. Um, so imbalances usually result from overbuilding. Mm -hmm. So the period from 2004, 5, 6, 7. When things were great. Things were great, and then it was followed by a bust. Yes, um, which we're still not out of. Um, actually, in New York, we are, we are really um, uh, in a different place. Okay, I had to interrupt you, interrupt you to ask you, uh, maybe it's a silly question. Did New York even really feel the bust? I mean, really? You I know, know some people got deals here and there, but it didn't last long. You know, it lasted longer than you think for two reasons. Um, if you go back to 2007, mm -hmm. um, in 2007, which was the high water mark, there was something like more than 8,000 condominiums sold in New York. Okay. 2009, 3,500. Oh, wow. So I think it's fair to say that that's a pretty substantial change. Um, now, what's going on now is the biggest imbalance in Manhattan ever. There are fewer, it's the lowest inventory the city's yeah. had ever. I know, rental vacancies, I mean, don't, not they don't even exist. The you landlord know, has the power right now. Make sure you get him a Christmas present. Um, well, part of that, um, one of the consequences of that, which is sort of interesting, is there are 9,000 apartments being built in downtown Brooklyn, Williamsburg yes. and Long Island City. I'll tell you what, Greenpoint, Brooklyn is, I mean, rents are up in the double digits over the past year. One of the reasons, HBO show Girls, because that's really? where it takes place. But right now, the difference between a Manhattan rent and a Brooklyn rent, $300. That's it. Not really. The latest report from Douglas Elliman has that being, I think, the, the smallest or the second smallest gap on record. It's smaller, but the truth of the matter is Manhattan rents um, are like $80 a square foot. Rents in downtown okay, Brooklyn you get more for your money. are in the $60, $62 a foot. You know, I think one of the consequences of this is going to be um, you're going to have a lot of people moving to New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Where in New Jersey? Um, someplace less expensive. <laughs> Okay, and it's just getting a little bit late in the show, so I, I, you're on to talk about this, um, the Seaport City here in Manhattan, right near Battery Park City, correct? Yes. And, you know, it's controversial because we saw what happened with Hurricane Sandy and how it devastated Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, the Jersey Shore. What are your, your thoughts on having Seaport City be where it is and investing all that money and resources into it? Well, look, Seaport City has been there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I think that, unfortunately, the original uh, concept for the project was something that both from a community perspective and from a user perspective really never made a lot of sense. The real question I I I after Sandy is what are they going to do for life safety systems? What are they, where are they going to put the transformers? Yeah. What's going to happen in terms of users? Do we know? Well, there are ideas. So, for example, what one should do in a new development is not put the transformer in the basement. You should obviously put it somewhere other than that. Yeah. I, things, climate is different now. And things, we have old structures and, and old systems in place. So, yeah. I mean, and you're going to have to have something that deals with life safety systems like elevators. You're going to have to have something that deals with um, some kind of power when mm -hmm. the power goes down like an emergency circuit so that somebody's refrigerator doesn't go out you're going to need to have something and are all of these things being considered right now yes how much progress have we made um well i think that it, it's an interesting question because it winds up being in three categories you have the old buildings 
and question what do they do mm -hmm. versus someone doing something new like Seaport City where one has the ability to ask these questions, um, develop alternative answers and implement them. Mm -hmm. So, And then you've also got this interesting conflict between the private sector and the pu public sector because you've got a building department mm -hmm. that should, could, ought to promulgate new rules and regulations, but then who pays for it? Yeah. Are you working on Seaport City? Are you involved in that? No. No. Okay. Why not? Um, I wasn't one of the bidders. <laughs> so you... I'm actually working on two new buildings, um, one in the Flatiron District, and I'm about to build um, what should be the most interesting project in Harlem in a decade. Can you say anything further? Sure. Um, it's a project on the corner of 125th Street and Park Avenue to build two large rental 80-20 buildings, 80% 80 market rate, 20% low income. Now, why are you doing that in an area of New York City that is growing and growing astronomically and gentrifying? Well, I, why? Because it's, it's Manhattan and it's... So we don't, you know, if it's becoming wealthier, why do they need rent control? Right, is that what you said, 20% would be what? No, I got it's that wrong? a program, no, it's not rent control. It's 20% is affordable. Okay. So the city creates projects in which they attempt to, to provide uh, affordable housing by mixing it, okay. partially affordable, partially market mm -hmm. rate. Um, it's a program that's been in the city for 20 yeah, years. Yeah, we've had that. Okay. So why are you doing it in Harlem? Because I think it's a great emerging neighborhood in the city. Mm -hmm. um, it's Manhattan as opposed to being in downtown Brooklyn right. or Williamsburg. But in 10 years, will Harlem still be emerging or will it be emerged? Um, I think it's already emerged, yeah. um, but I think that it's an opportunity in a neighborhood that has tremendous history, culture, mm -hmm. um, and it's a neighborhood. Right. It is a neighborhood. It's kind of cool up there, actually. Good restaurants, too. Bruce, thank you so much for coming on. A pleasure. Uh, fascinating stuff, really, truly. I'm impressed. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.